Hey everybody, Barry Johns here. Welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. You know, Universal Audio in its heyday absolutely destroyed the competition. I mean destroy them. They were a complete game changer. They made it easily, easily transitionable to get away from Avid HDX uh, systems as well as dominate the interface market with the ability to track through DSP plugins. Their ability to do that actually forced all the other interface developers to start to kind of scurry around to find ways that they can implement DSP into their interfaces so that we can track with no latency. So when they first came out with that, man, they were at the top of their game and they were groundbreaking and they were desperately needed. But today, is that the case? Let's get to it. <music> Okay, okay, okay. So here I am back talking about Universal Audio again. Okay, and I know for some of you, it feels like I'm beating a dead horse. And I get it. Trust me. I completely get it. Okay. Um, but I think this is important for people looking to invest their money in the future, as well as folks are invested in the UAD platform, whether they want to continue investing in that platform or not. Obviously, if you're already invested in the UAD platform, you should stay there and enjoy it and use it until it no longer works for you. That is my advice. I'm not saying that using the UAD platform, there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It works as it's advertised, at least if you're on a Mac. You have some problems on a Windows, but if at least you're on a Mac, you know it's going to work great for you, okay? And so um, the, 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 the challenge gets is, is as we're moving forward, we decide what we need. Now, like I said in the beginning of this, uh, when Universal Audio first came out with their Apollo series, okay, it was truly, uh, it was really the second time for that company that they were groundbreaking. The first time when they first came out with the UAD one card, okay, that was groundbreaking number one, okay, and that really changed a lot of things because the quality of their plugins far surpassed everything else out there. I mean, far surpassed it, and that was UAD one, okay. Then they came out with UAD two. That wasn't as groundbreaking as far as compelling to jump into it. Basically, all that did was just gave you a more powerful DSP card. You know, they upped their Shark processors uh, to go with the UAD2 so you could actually run more plugins and it could do more processing. And that's when they could even develop more intense uh, DSP based plugins. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, that wasn't as groundbreaking as it was when it initially came out. Now, when they came out with their Apollo series, to where now you have an interface with built-in DSP that could rival any HDX system, okay, out there, uh, that became very compelling. I mean, off the charts, like groundbreaking. No one else could do that, and they dumb, and that which is why they rose to so much popularity so fast. You know, you really couldn't go wrong back then. It was the best investment to make for your studio if you had the money. Now, it was never an inexpensive way to go. It's always been um, at the top tier of home project studios. It's not the it's not the cost or anywhere near it of running a Pro Tools HDX system, not even close. But I would say it's the second uh, most expensive platform to run simply because their plugins are, even though they're so good, they've historically been outrageously expensive. Even when on sale, they've been outrageously expensive compared to the competition. And for the longest time, their plugins dominated the competition. No one else could make plugins even remotely close, which is what, how you justified spending the money on going with a UAD system. That all made perfect sense back then. I mean, I've, I've been in and out of the UAD ecosystem twice. Okay. And, and had I not been an, uh, a DSP based user with Avid, um, I, 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 I would have stayed there probably, to be honest with you, at least until, you know, a certain time frame. Um, uh, but at the time, I didn't need it because I had DSP processing ability at the time. So I was just I was owning the technology just to run their plugins. Um, and at the time, I didn't find it that compelling uh, for my workflow because I'd already had some really great gear. OK, so um, so when you look at what Universal Audio was back then, which was and we're not talking that long ago, for goodness sakes. OK, we're talking within the last 12, I'd say I'd say five to 12 years, okay, is when they were the most relevant, okay? In the last five years, they're starting to become less relevant, and they're realizing that, which is why they're coming out with Luna. I do believe that Luna is their next transition 
to try to get their plugins over to a native type format while still keeping everything internal and being able to, because UA's biggest problem has always been copy protection, which is one of the things that plugin subscriptions have done is they quite frankly eliminated the need for people to do, um, you know, to, to work on crack plugins and things like that, because you can simply just get all the plugins you need, not have to spend that much money and you get everything up to date. And you don't have to worry about breaking any laws or cause any problems or being a complete loser and despicable human being because you steal things. I guess you know how I feel about crack plugins. Okay. So, um, but you know, the, when, 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 you, when you look at all these plugins that historically have been, been so great, they need to be able to do something. So again, with Luna, I, I I'm guessing I, because they've already got a few plugins that can run natively, as long as you're using Luna, the only problem with Luna is it's got great potential, but it's got a long freaking way to go to truly compete with other DAW, uh, uh, DAW is out there. Okay. It'll get there. I'm confident it'll get there, but I think, I think they've seen the writing on the wall and that's why they're doing what they're doing. Although I can't seem to get them to come out and say that that's what my thoughts are on it is. So, um, so today UAD's DSP is just not needed. I, I don't care what anybody tells himself It's you know, that DSP is just, is just no longer needed. So understanding that that begs the question, you know, how did UAD fall so far so fast in their need in the market. Well, they still have hype going for them. Okay. There's obviously always been a lot of hype around UAD uh, platforms. I think um, you, you see it everywhere. A lot of people will use them for good reasons. Like based upon everything I said, there are many good reasons why they're in so many project studios across the globe. Okay. There's a very good reason for that. But if I were buying, a, uh, if I were looking for an interface today, I wouldn't even consider uh, a, a UAD interface. It wouldn't even cross my mind because there's absolutely no need today, in my opinion, to, to need DSP for plug-in processing if you have the right computer. It's much wiser, in my opinion, to invest that money in the right computer. So, yes. So the purpose of this video is understanding that, that yes, UAD uh, was much, much, much needed and was absolutely groundbreaking. And quite frankly, it, 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 for a long period of time, the no brainer solution for those who could afford it uh, into their studios, it really was that good and that compelling. And there are reasons for it, which is why most of you who own these products today bought into it. OK, you know, and some of you maybe didn't have a very powerful computer and buying into UAD enabled you to get more mileage out of that computer. And I understand that, too. OK, but today w with a entry level M1 Mac that you can get a Mac mini spec'd out properly with. 16 gigabyte of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, preferably get that up to 32 gigabyte of RAM, I guess, if, you, if you're going to go that route. Um, but you're talking, talking $1,200, $1,300 for that, whereas before you'd have to spend well over $2,000 to get that kind of a power, okay? And so you can do a lot more today than you could in the past. So, um, so understand that although they were, they were great in their heyday at a time, today it, it should give you pause and to reconsider whether or not that's right is the right system for you today or not okay so hope you like the things i talk about on this channel if you do hit that like button that subscribe button and that notification bell and until next time i hope you have a great productive recording day bye bye